I remember my dad mashing the potatoes. I remember the sound of him going, yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> I remember, I remember <laughs> really? playing with the mashed potatoes and making the gravy go down in little streams and putting the uh, parsley on as little trees on the mountainside. <laughs> Well, it was 1975, and there was an article about all the world's museums, and of all those 20,000 at the time, there were none devoted to the potato. And um, it became, went from a tabletop collection to um, a passion to collect things about the potato and exhibit food in museums, and uh, here we are now. Well, this is one of the most ambitious uh, interior exhi temporary exhibitions that the U.S. Botanic Garden has ever done. You know, we discovered that here are these people that have devoted much of their lives to the potato who could give us some really, or lend us some really wonderful artifacts. And um, it kind of, it kind of grew. When we celebrate the potato, we celebrate ourselves. The potato has like 80% water like we do, and it's uh, changed and transformed uh, world history. It's the most important food plant. It provides more food value per acre than any other planted crop. People um, think they know the potato. They think they, they know it because they've eaten it. And, but then they come across what our interpretation and showing how it's a world phenomenon. The potato is a native of the Andes in what is today Peru and Bolivia. Uh, the potato uh, was carried by the Spanish to first to the Canary Islands in about 1570 where it was planted and then it went to mainland Spain and then on into Europe and up into northern Europe and so on and so forth. It came back to the Americas, came to New Hampshire in about, what, 1719, but it came also to Jamestown in about 1620. So it went in a circle and then many, many traders carried it to Asia, Captain Cook carried it to New Zealand and Australia for instance. Uh, and it went around the world fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, you hear about the uh, Irish potato, you hear about the Idaho potato. Uh, it becomes so synonymous with the place where it's been. Before the potato, people couldn't inhabit all year round high mountain valleys in Switzerland and Nepal, the Rocky Mountain West. Once the potato arrived, it is a mountain crop, although it grows at sea level, it grows in the desert. Uh, it, it made possible people being able to stay in those high mountain valleys year round. It has completely transformed places that it's gone. The, the garden here is also growing uh, some really great um, varieties out, outside. Just outside that window I can see them, including the Ozette potato, which is a very old uh, variety that the people of Nia Bay have been growing for um, generations. Because it is so knobbly and comes in so many different colors, it's very much like us. And there's something about it with which we identify. The, the potato really has had the largest impact on pop culture uh, that, that we, we know of, and, and yet we, you know, we love all, studying all these other foods. I think it's because it has eyes and it's, it has a face. It has a... It has bulk. A human look. The most popular classic toy is Mr. Potato Head and his family. Uh, first toy advertised on television. You then have the couch potato movement of the 70s and the 80s to uh, um, excessive television watching. Uh, then you have a counter movement of saying that no, the potato is an active, is, is an active energy food. Um, and, you, and you have uh, do the mashed potato, the, the dance craze. I mean, it just, every era seems to have a uh, pop, uh, use the potato in, 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 its, uh, in its culture. Everything about the potato is uh, satisfying to, to collect and understand. And it's a lifetime pursuit for me. That's, that's why you'll never fully understand uh, this this subject and you'll never fully collect everything about it.